Hi everybody, uh, we're going to go through some of the basics of intramolecular forces in this video. Uh, specifically what we're going to talk about are dipole-dipole forces and hydrogen bonding in this video. We're going to save London dispersion for another video. In addition to this video, there's also on the Moodle page, there's a short five-minute video um, explaining intramolecular forces that has uh, some pretty cool looking graphics and I think they do a pretty good job of uh, explaining the basics of IMFs. So as we get to in class, there are three uh, fundamental intramolecular forces. These forces are also known as van der Waals forces. They are dipole-dipole force, hydrogen bonding, and London dispersion. One of the things I want you to understand from the get-go is that all of these forces are actually variations on the same theme. In very much um, uh, peculiar ways, all three of these forces are variations on the dipole-dipole force. So whether you're talking about hydrogen bonding, you're actually talking about something that's just a variation of dipole-dipole force, as is the London dispersion force. That, too, is just a specialized case of the dipole-dipole force. All right, so let's go ahead and add, then, um, these forces in more detail. But before we get there, uh, let me just remind you we're talking about intermolecular forces, intramolecular forces. You spent um, quite a bit of time sophomore year talking about. But these are going to be uh, uh, the intermolecular forces. Um, so intramolecular forces, they were also known as bonds. There are two types, ionic and covalent. But the intramolecular forces that we're going to be studying here, uh, these forces actually, although they're terribly, terribly weak compared to bonds, they still actually are significant. They're going to play a pretty important role in some of the macroscopic properties that we can observe, specifically things like freezing point and boiling point, and also vapor pressure. We'll also get into some others like uh, surface tension uh, and viscosity. But these weak inter between one molecule to another molecule, these weak intermolecular forces are ultimately um, observable in the macroscopic world. So the first force, the dipole-dipole force. Dipole-dipole um, is really just um, a fancy or, I don't know, maybe less fancy term for electrostatic interactions. We're talking about polar molecules. So we're talking about molecules that have a positive end and a negative end within the same molecule. Now we usually don't think about these things as being truly fully positive and truly fully negative. That would be more like an ionic compound. What we're talking about are molecules that contain partially positive charges and partially negative charges within that same molecule. And it's these partial charges, this partial separation of charge, that leads to the ability of these molecules to attract one another. Now what kind of energies are we talking about? We're talking about single digits kilojoules per mole or maybe low double digits kilojoules per mole. Now again, compared to the hundreds of kilojoules per mole or even thousand kilojoules per mole of actual bonds, these dipole-dipole forces are pretty weak. So what's a standard example? We could think about a HCl molecule. Now I'm not going to put in all the, the, the Lewis dots just to keep it a little less busy, but HCl. As you know, chlorine is significantly more electronegative than hydrogen. So we would represent the distribution of charge as a partial negative on the chlorine and a partial positive on the hydrogen. Now these, this is a very polar molecule, so these are partially charged species, partially separated, but they quickly can get to fully positive and fully negative. So what we have is the uneven distribution of charge in HCl, and what that is going to do is it's going to allow for the first HCl molecule to get intermolecularly attracted, notice the use of the dot dot dots, between one molecule and another. So that dot, 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 that's our intramolecular force. In this case, it's specifically the dipole-dipole force. Now here's another cartoon showing dipole-dipole interactions, even more vague than my HCl example. But again, we have sort of this molecular blob with its negative and positive being attracted to another molecular blob with its 
negative and positive. And the, the diagram also shows not only attractive forces in pink, but also repulsive forces in the, uh, in the bluish green. But on, uh, in total, we're talking about a net attractive force here. Polar molecules will attract each other with some measurable strength, again, in the single to low double digits kilojoules per mole. Variation of the dipole-dipole interaction is hydrogen bonding, and I want to point out a few things here. First, hydrogen bonding is just a special case of dipole-dipole interactions. You have a partially positive end on one part of the molecule and a partially negative end on the other end of the molecule, and that uneven distribution of charge is what allows one molecule to attract to, stick to, a completely different molecule. The other thing I want to point out is my use of quotation marks here, okay? This is not bonding in the sense of a covalent bond. So I want to put hydrogen bonding in quotes here to make sure you understand that we're not talking about the intramolecular interaction within a molecule. We're still very much talking about inter between one molecule to the other. Why does hydrogen bonding get its own name? Well, it's because it's kind of a stronger version of dipole-dipole interactions. We're talking about energies that might be in the clear double-digit ranges of kilojoules per mole. So what do you need to do, what do you need to have to do hydrogen bonding? Well, one thing you need to have is a hydrogen atom. That's probably pretty obvious. But moreover, more particularly, that hydrogen atom has to be bonded to, and when I say bonded, I mean a bond, bonded to an electronegative element like nitrogen, oxygen, and fluorine. Now in this video I'm showing chlorine in parentheses because there's some recent evidence that chlorine could also be electronegative enough to uh, engage in what we might call hydrogen bonds. On the other video you could watch uh, that's on the Moodle site, he's not going to talk about chlorine and I think that's fine. Um, I think it's probably best to leave chlorine out of it for now, but I put it in there just because it's, it's a little bit debatable. So nitrogen, oxygen, and fluorine. These are among the most electronegative elements on the periodic table. So when hydrogen is bonded to N, or to O, or to F, the hydrogen itself becomes partially positive, and that N, O, or F becomes partially negative, as you can see over here in the example of water. You can see our delta symbol, our partial symbols being used for the hydrogens, and our delta negative being used for the oxygen. And then we have a whole team, a whole array of water molecules showing their various hydrogen bonding interactions. From that hydrogen there on that water molecule to the oxygen there of a separate, entirely other water molecule. Now, this hydrogen bonding in water, it's not particularly strong. It's probably on the order of about 15 kilojoules per mole for, each, uh, for a mole of these interactions. And you can tell these interactions aren't very strong because, as I mentioned in class, you can take your finger and you can stick it in a cup of water without breaking your finger. So your finger is overcoming. It's breaking up these hydrogen bonding interactions so they're not terribly strong. Another really good example of hydrogen bonding comes in the structure of DNA. As you know, DNA is sort of a zipper of two helices that come together to form a double helix. That zipper, that double helix, is held together entirely through hydrogen bonding interactions that I'm circling there in this pair of um, adenine and thiamine. So we have the H of the adenine intermolecularly attracted to the oxygen over on the thiamine. Or in the guanine uh, cytosine pair, we have at the top there, we have this oxygen being electrostatically attracted to the hydrogen of the cytosine. It's that hydrogen that's partially positive because it's bonded to that nitrogen. So that partially positive hydrogen then can attract to the partially negative oxygen of the other molecule, in this case guanine. So these are just a couple of examples of hydrogen bonding. But don't forget, A, it's not bonding, okay? Use the air quotes. In fact, go into your textbook and put quotes 
around the word bonding every time you see the phrase hydrogen bonding. Okay? You'll actually be doing some good editing in the textbook. And the other thing we want to keep in mind is that hydrogen bonding is nothing more than a specialized case of dipole-dipole interactions. In another video later on, we'll take a look at the uh, third fundamental intermolecular force of uh, London dispersion.